Hey everyone and welcome back to part 2 of how to model a sailing ship hull using ship planes in 3ds Max. In part 2 we will start by connecting all the lines of the body plane to form the main section of the ship hull frame. So I will start by selecting my reference images, right click, freeze selection to freeze my reference images. Then I will select all the lines of the body plane, Ctrl V to copy them, then Alt Q to isolate them. Then I will select the first one, right click, attach, and I will attach all the lines together. Like this. Still a couple more to go. And almost done. And here we are. Now I can go to the vertex mode by pressing the shortcut one or by pressing this button here. Now I want to connect all these splines together to form the main section of the ship hull frame. And to do so, I will use the cross section option here in the spline menu and the geometry section. Here we have the cross section option. The cross section option is used to connect splines together. But there is two main condition must be realized to achieve a clean connection result using the cross section option. The first condition is the number of vertices in each spline. Let me start connecting. I want to connect this spline with this spline. So I will click on this spline, then click on the spline I want connected to. And as you can see, we have a clean connection result. And this is because the cross section option connects splines by creating segments between vertices in both of them. So, if we have the same number of vertices in both splines, then we will have a clean connection result. Let me undo this. And let's check the number of vertices in each spline. This spline has 12 vertices. And this spline also has 12 vertices. So since both splines has the same, has the same number of vertices in both of them, then using the cross section option to connect the both of them will result in a clean connection. And this is the first condition. Now let's talk about the second condition, which is the position of the first vertex. As you can see, this yellow vertex is called the first vertex. And as you can see, the position of the first vertex in all of the splines is at the beginning of the spline. So what will happen if I change the position of the first vertex in this spline from the beginning to the end? So. I will select the vertex at the end of the spline, then right click make first. So I have changed the position of the first vertex from the beginning of the spline to the end of the spline. Now let's start connecting using cross section option. I will connect this spline with this spline. And as you can see, the connection result from using the cross section option is deformed and this is because of the change in the position of the first vertex so to have a clean connection result using the cross section option we must be sure that all the splines has the same position of the first vertex now i want to start connecting these splines using the cross section option but first, I need to be sure of the number of vertices in each spline. And as you can see, the number of vertices in each spline in this group of splines is 12 vertices. While the number of vertices in each spline in this group of splines is 11 vertices. This means that we need to increase the number of vertices in each spline in this group of splines from 11 to 12 vertices. Also, as you can see, here we have a flow of vertices in this group of spline, while 
we don't have the same flow of vertices in this group of splines. So now I can go to the segment mode by pressing the shortcut tool and I will select all of this segment and I will divide them by one. Dividing them by one will create a new vertex at the middle of each segment. Now back to the vertex mode and now I am sure that the number of vertices in each spline in this group of splines is 12 vertices. And now I can start connecting them using the cross section option. Now start connect all these splines together using the cross section option like this. Almost done. And here we are. Now, as you can see, I have connected this group of 12 vertices splines with a clean connection using the cross section option. Now, I want to deattach the unconnected splines from the connected one. So, I will go to the spline mode and start selecting these splines. Then, down in the menu, click on deattach. This will attach the unconnected splines. Now, I am left with the connected ones. Now, I can add a surface modifier to my shape. And as you can see, the surface modifier converted the connected spline using the cross section option into an editable poly surface. But as you can see, we have some deformation in the surface of our model. And this is because of the high step number of the patch topology. So if I lower this number to zero, now we have a smooth low poly model. Now back to editing the rest of our splines. Now I will select the rest of our splines, but first I will deattach this one. Now I'm left with these three splines. I want to connect these three splines using the cross section option, but first I must be sure of the number of vertices in each one of them. This spline has 13 vertices, while each one of these splines has 12 vertices. Therefore, we need to increase the number of vertices in each one of them from 12 to 13. And as you can see here in this spline, it has an extra vertex here. So I need to add this extra vertex in each one of them. So right click, refine, and I will manually add this extra vertex like this. Now I'm, I'm sure that each one of these splines has number of vertices equal to 13. Now I'm ready to connect them using the cross section option like this. Now I can add a surface modifier to our connected splines. And as you can see, the surface modifier converted the connected splines into an editable poly surface, but it has a flipped normal and two flip it's normal just enable this option here in the surface modifier menu now both objects has the same direction of normals now i want to attach these two objects together but first i will select both of them right click and convert to editable poly then i will select this object right click attach and I will attach it to the other one. Now I want to connect this border with this border using the bridge option. But first I will go to the edge faces mode by pressing F4. Then I will, I will go to the edge mode. Now I want to know the number of edges in this border. By selecting one of the edges double click to select the loop. Now the number of edges in this border is 11 edges. Now I want to know the number of edges in the other border 
the number of edges in the other border is 12 edges and to have a clean connection using the bridge option you need to have the same number of edges in both borders therefore i will deselect this first edge so that i am left with 11 edges then i will select the other 11 edges of the other border and now i'm ready to press the bridge button and as you can see now we have connected both borders we can go to the perspective view by pressing p and as you can see the borders are connected but the created polygon has a different smoothing group so i will go to the polygon mode and select all polygons then i will clear all smoothing group then i will assign a new smoothing group to all the polygons now i have a smooth low poly model back to the front view now i'm left with this last spline and i want to find a way to connect this spline with our main object so i will select our spline and i will add an extrude modifier the amount of extrusion is minus 100 centimeter but as you can see the created model is a high poly model it has a much denser polygons than our original object which is a low poly model and this is due to if you go to the layer of the edit plus spline is due to the high step number of the interpolation interpolation okay <laughs> So, if I go with a lower step number, say, zero interpolation, <laughs> I hate this word. <laughs> and back to our extrude modifier, you can see that our new created model will be a low poly model. Now, it is suitable to be attached to our main object. So, I will select our main object, right click, attach, and I will attach it to our new object now i can connect them using the target weld target weld will weld each vertex on this side with its corresponding vertex on the other side let me zoom in And now I am left with one vertex on this side and three vertices on the other side. And to solve this problem, I will go to the edge mode and I will select this edge and this edge, right click, connect, and I will connect them using two edges. This new two edges will create a new two vertices. Now I will have three vertices on this side and three vertices on this size now i can go back to target welding and start welding those vertices together and here we are exit the wireframe mode by pressing f3 now i can go to the perspective view and as you can see i have connected the last spline to our main object but the created polygon has a different smoothing group so i will go to the polygon mode select all polygons go to the smoothing group section create clear all then i will assign a new smoothing group and now i have created a smooth low poly object back to the front view and exit the iteration mode by pressing alt q and as you can see now we have finished creating the main section of the ship hull frame using the lines of the body plan and this is the end of part two in part two we learned about the cross section option and how can it be used to connect splines together and what are the main conditions that must be realized to achieve a clean connection using the cross-section option we also learned about the surface modifier and how can it be used 
to convert the connected spline into an editable poly surface. We also finished modeling the main section of the chip hull frame using the lines of the body plan and in part 3 we will complete modeling our ship hull. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, show some love by liking our video, stay tuned, see you in part 3.